Chapter 7, Your Honor. Sonia thought she was keeping it a secret, her dream of becoming a judge. But somehow, the older, more experienced lawyers in her life seemed to know. They gave her advice that would help her achieve her goal. Jose Cabranes, her mentor, told her to do volunteer work for Puerto Rican groups that needed lawyers. David Botwinick, one of the nine partners at Pavia and Harcourt, helped Sonia get an important volunteer job with the state of New York. Then her old boss, Robert Morgenthau, stepped in. He asked the mayor of New York to put Sonia on a committee that looked at how money was spent in political campaigns. All of her volunteer jobs gave Sonia a chance to be noticed by politicians. And guess who appointed judges to the biggest, most important courts? Politicians! When the time was right, David Botwinick encouraged Sonia to apply to be a U.S. District Court judge. The U.S. District Court was not like the state courts where criminals were put on trial. It was not like the court where Sonia had been a prosecutor. It was a higher court, in charge with the most important kinds of cases. The judges, not the juries, made the decisions. Wow, Sonia thought. Being a judge on the district courts? That would be incredible. But Sonia was only 36 years old. What were the chances she would be chosen? It took Sonia nearly a, f a week to fill out the application. She had to explain about everything in her life. Every person she knew, every case she'd worked on, every volunteer job she'd helped. A bit about the U.S. court system. The court system in America can be confusing. There are so many different kinds of courts. So starting with the smallest ones, local courts in towns and cities handle small problems. Traffic courts deal with people who get tickets for driving too fast. Family courts help settle problems when people get divorced and the like. Next up we have the state courts. State courts handle bigger crimes. Juries decide whether the person is guilty or not. And above that we have federal courts. Federal courts deal with laws that apply to the whole country. If someone makes counterfeit money, for example, that's a federal crime. It is illegal in every state. So there are three layers, quote-unquote, in the federal court system. With the first and lowest federal court is the U.S. District Court. There are 94 district courts across the country. The district court in New York is one of the most important because so many big cases start in New York City. So this is where Sonia Sotomayor uh, got offered the job, is in the U.S. District Court. The next highest federal court is called the Circuit Court. This is where lawyers go to appeal rulings. That means they try to change the verdict of the lower court. Cases are decided by a group of judges, usually three. And lastly, the highest court in the land is the Supreme Court. It is the last chance to reverse a lower court's ruling. There are nine justices, uh, justices being another name for judges, on the Supreme Court. They are appointed for life. When one of them dies or retires, the President suggests to Congress who should fill the job. But Congress has to approve the President's recommendation. Sonia sent the job application to Senator Patrick Moynihan. He was the New York Senator who would recommend her. But that was only the beginning. She would have to be interviewed by a lot of people. She would have to answer questions in front of Congress. Then Congress would have to vote. If they didn't approve her, Sonia wouldn't become a judge. Do you think all these steps happened quickly? No. The process took almost two years. Until finally, in 1992, Congress approved her. President George H.W. Bush named her as a federal judge. Her court would be the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, which covered eight counties in Lower New York. It was an incredible honor and a dream come true. Best of all, she could stay in this job forever. Federal judges were appointed for life. Learning to be a judge was just like everything else Sonia had done. She had to dive in and learn fast on the job. Years later, Sonia admitted that at first she was scared to sit in the courtroom. She tried to handle all her cases in her office, which is called the judge's chambers. But finally, she had to, to go into court and sit on the bench. She put on her judge's black robe. She was so nervous, her knees knocked together. Pretty soon, though, Sonia felt confident being a judge. In 1995, she had to decide one of the biggest cases of the year. The case was about baseball. <laughs> All Major League Baseball players had gone out on strike. They didn't like the deal that the team owners were offering them. The strike had been going on for seven months. There had been no World Series the year before. Sonia was the judge for the case. The day of the trial, TV cameras and reporters filled the halls outside the courtroom. Sonia listened to the lawyers for each side. 
Then she took a short break. Some people thought Judge Sotomayor would take days or weeks to decide the case. But Sonia loved baseball just as much as everyone else. She was a big fan of the New York Yankees. She didn't want the strike to drag on. Spring training was just around the corner. So she gave her decision right away. She was kind and polite to everyone, but she agreed with the players. The owners were being unfair. She had the owners, or she said the owners, she keep working with the players for a new contract. When the players heard her ruling, they ended the strike. Sonia Sotomayor has saved baseball. The New York Times wrote about Sonia. They said she was like a great baseball player who could wake up on Christmas Day and pull a curveball. That meant she didn't need any spring training or practice to do her job well. Sonia probably didn't agree with that, though. Hard work and practice had always been the keys to her success in everything she did.